Okay. Alex, you can start anytime. Okay. Okay, good morning, everybody. So, uh, welcome to this uh, World Potato Congress uh, presentation. Thank you to Nora Olson for inviting me for this presentation. Uh, so, since Nora thought that this is a perfect time to talk about viruses, we can just as well to talk about potato viruses, um, which is the topic of uh, my presentation. Okay. So this is an overview of uh, potato viruses, how they affect potato, uh, and with a focus on some uh, specific cases, uh, some specific viruses that may be uh, more important in the US or in North America in general. So first of all, we, uh, we better define what is, uh, what is a virus. Uh, so the definition that I always give in my uh, virology course is that the virus is a set of one or more nucleic acid template molecules. It may be RNA or DNA, uh, normally these nucleic acids are encapsulated in a protective uh, code or different kinds of codes built of protein and or lipoprotein. And this uh, combination is able to organize its own replication only within a suitable uh, host cell. It can usually be horizontally transmitted between hosts. So it's important to <coughs> understand that Viruses are obligate uh, parasites, so they don't exist outside of the host cell and use the host cell machinery to reproduce and propagate itself. So typically in a plant virus, <coughs> you have two main components. Uh, it's uh, nucleic acid, which may uh, comprise between uh, five and about 30% of the total mass of the particle, and also a protein that is typically <clears throat> between 95 and maybe 70% of the virus particle. So uh, what viruses uh, affect potato? <clears throat> so <clears throat> there's a long list of viruses that can infect potato, but the ones that are important or significant for potato productions, it's a relatively limited set uh, of uh, virus pathogens. Uh, and, and this significance uh, of different potato viruses may be uh, different in different parts of the world on different continents. Uh, however, uh, there is a group of viruses that uh, seems to be universally important for potato production everywhere uh, this crop uh, is grown. So this, uh, this is this uh, 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 list of six viruses that uh, typically deserve more attention on the part of potato pathologists. These are potato virus Y, potato leafrol virus, potato virus A, potato virus M, potato virus S, and potato virus uh, X. Uh, there are uh, some viruses that I listed on the right, calling it minor vir virus pathogens. This I typically can be found in uh, uh, potato produced in various places, uh, but, they, uh, but they are not uh, very significant from the economic standpoint. 
Although, once again, it may be different in different places. For instance, uh, the significance of these viruses also is related to whether they can induce symptoms uh, in tubers. So because it's a, a tuber uh, crop, uh, we, we define uh, two different types of symptoms, foliar uh, in leaves and also in tubers. Uh, so this is a table showing these uh, main potato viruses broken down by the type of vector that they use for uh, transmission and propagation and also broken by type of uh, foliar and tuber symptoms that can be seen um, uh, in potato. So you can see that uh, there is a, a broad variation in the type of vector that viruses may utilize for transmission and propagation. For instance, there is a virus, potato virus X, uh, that has uh, uh, no uh, vector and is transmitted strictly uh, mechanically. Uh, this particular virus, because of this uh, uh, type of transmission, is the easiest one to control. So through tissue culture and uh, uh, exclusion of inoculum, it can easily be controlled if uh, simple sanitation measures are uh, taken. Uh, on top of this, this virus is rarely uh, associated with any type of tuber symptoms. So the significance of it uh, decreased significantly uh, in the past years. There is a group of uh, uh, viruses, potato virus Y, potato virus uh, S, and potato leaf roll viruses transmitted by aphids. Uh, these, uh, uh, these viruses uh, uh, may induce uh, mosaic or leaf rolling symptoms in foliage. Uh, two of them, uh, potato virus Y and potato leaf roll virus, are known to be associated with uh, uh, very important uh, tuber symptoms, potato tuber ne necrotic ring spot disease and also net necrosis. And uh, uh, there are a couple of emerging, uh, or what we consider emerging viruses, tobacco rattle virus and potato mop top virus. Uh, these two are transmitted through soil, although by two different vectors. Uh, uh, tobacco rattle virus is transmitted by uh, nematodes uh, and uh, may induce symptoms in foliage, although not always uh, visible. Uh, but what, what is the most important, they uh, induce both tobacco rattle and uh, potato mop top induce severe symptoms uh, in tubers uh, called uh, uh, in different parts of the world uh, differently. In Europe or in Britain, they tend to be called spraying uh, and uh, in North America, in the US, they, this is called corky ring spot. Potato mop top virus uh, is a soil transmitted uh, virus, but the vector for this virus is unusual. It's a soil uh, living protist, uh, Spangospora, which by itself can induce a disease called powdery scab. So I will be talking about these four viruses that are associated with tuber symptoms uh, in more detail uh, further. So let's start with potato virus Y. Uh, the type of disease that uh, this virus induces in potato, uh, it, uh, it's a mosaic in foliage and tuber necrosis uh, in tubers. So uh, in foliage, you can see chlorotic and rugose leaves. And uh, in some uh, cases, in certain combinations between uh, cultivar genotype and strain of the virus, you can see severe stunting, necrotic spots, uh, leaf drop, all the symptoms of systemic necrotic reaction. Uh, uh, in uh, tubers, uh, this uh, uh, virus may induce, in certain susceptible cultivars, it may include tuber necrotic reaction. I will talk about this a little later. So, so the source of infection and main route of spread uh, in potato production uh, 
uh, is uh, uh, seed tubers or volunteers providing inoculum and in season spread is uh, vectored by numerous species of uh, aphids. So this is an, uh, a brief overview of uh, this particular virus from a virologist standpoint. This virus is a type member of the family, large family Potiviridae, genus Potivirus. Uh, the virus has these uh, long flexus filamentous particles uh, and uh, it can infect wi wide uh, range of uh, hosts from, especially from the family Solanacea. So transmission of these viruses may be mechanical. Uh, it may be by uh, aphids in a non-persistent manner. But for potato, the most important transmission is through uh, seed potato. So what is uh, also interesting, this virus uh, exists as a complex of various strains. And to give you an idea how diverse uh, the range of these strains may be. You can see uh, the uh, graphical representation of uh, potato virus wide genetic diversity. So on the left, you have this uh, 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 large number of uh, recombinant structures uh, composed uh, of these uh, five uh, non recombinant or parental. Uh, sequences that are drawn uh, on top of this uh, list. So you can see that uh, most of these recombinant uh, structures are composed of pieces of uh, two, primarily two different uh, parental sequences. One is called uh, PVYN or PVY European N and also the ordinary strain PVY uh, O. Uh, Right now, we can define 36 different recombinant structures that are known, <coughs> that can be also be called <coughs> strains. So we uh, roughly uh, divide them between uh, those that are listed as non-recombinant, uh, common recombinant, common meaning that you can always or very frequently find this kind of recombinants in potato fields, <clears throat> and then we have a, uh, a long list of uh, uh, long list of structures that we call rare or infrequent that uh, uh, were found but uh, uh, were reported at least once or twice. Uh, <clears throat> from a U.S. perspective, <clears throat> it's uh, interesting. <clears throat> excuse me, that uh, we found only six recombinant strains in the U.S. potato. So on the left, you can see this uh, red arrows marking <coughs> strains that were found in the U.S. Uh, <coughs> even more important is that <coughs> just three of these, <coughs> no, excuse me, uh, just three of these uh, uh, recombinant structures uh, were associated with uh, tuber necrotic reactions. And uh, just one of them, PVY-NTN or PVY-NTN-A, uh, th this, uh, this is the structure uh, that I'm showing here, is the one that is re uh, really prevalent in the US potato. <laughs> so this is how the symptoms of uh, potato virus uh, Y <laughs> look like. Uh, in the foliage. On the left, you can see this uh, uh, mosaic and leaf drop that you can be seen uh, uh, in infected potato plants. And on the right, you can see a picture of a tuber uh, displaying this potato uh, tuber necrotic ring spot disease. So there are two, uh, um, two ways uh, this virus affects potato. First of all, uh, it reduces yield <coughs> of tubers, uh, sometimes very significantly. It may be up to 70% reduction in yield. Uh, and also uh, an additional damage comes from the effect on tuber quality. So in particular, 
susceptible uh, cultivar, the virus can induce potato tuber necrotic ring spot disease. Uh, and cultivars susceptible to this disease uh, are uh, Yukon Gold in North America. Uh, it may be uh, some European cultivars like Mona Lisa, uh, Hermes, or Nicola. And as you can see uh, here on these pictures, uh, the effect of this tuber damage uh, makes the tubers uh, unmarketable. Uh, and this is uh, in addition to the uh, yield reduction. So this is to show you how the uh, <coughs> uh, potato tuber necrotic ring spot disease looks like in Yukon Gold. Uh, when, uh, so this disease is cultivar specific, but it is also strain specific for the virus. You can see that the ordinary strain of the virus doesn't induce this uh, PTNRD in Yukon Gold, while, while various isolates of the strain uh, PVY and TN may induce different uh, degrees of PTNRD in this susceptible cultivar. So the disease itself uh, progresses from, uh, from the <coughs> original water-soaked uh, rings that may be visible at harvests or at harvest on, on the left. Uh, during storage, these uh, rings tend to uh, dry and eventually become uh, sunken, affecting sometimes even flesh of the virus. But in general, flesh uh, of the tuber remains uh, unaffected. So it's a largely a surface defect. The uh, second virus uh, associated with uh, tuber necrotic reactions uh, is potato mop top virus. Uh, this virus induces disease that is called uh, spraying uh, in uh, Britain and in Europe or uh, is called tuber necrosis in, uh, in the US and North America. Uh, in foliage, uh, this virus may induce yellow blotching or mottling, uh, particularly of uh, lower leaves and uh, very unusual chlorotic V-shaped markings in the leaflet. So it may also induce extreme stunting of the shoots. And that's what gave uh, the name of this uh, virus uh, mop top. Uh, the uh, vector for this uh, virus is a soil borne protist, uh, Plasmodium foramycet, Spangosporus subterranea. Uh, this is the uh, protist that by itself is able to induce a, a significant disease in potato. It is called uh, powdery scab. In addition to this, it may also vector this virus. So this is uh, uh, how foliar symptoms uh, look like, uh, taken from this, uh, uh, from this uh, description by uh, Harrison and Rivi. So you can see this famous V-shaped uh, chlorotic, uh, chlorotic markings. Uh, oh. uh, you, uh, you may see that uh, sometimes this virus uh, can induce uh, stunting of the shoots, uh, which uh, leads to this uh, name of mop top. But it's uh, important to remember that uh, it's very rare that systemic infection develops uh, uh, during uh, the disease. Uh, what, what it means is that the uh, stunting may affect just one or a few shoots, and sometimes uh, you have no foliar symptoms whatsoever. Although uh, uh, tubers may be uh, infected and display uh, the disease. So this is how the tuber disease looks like. And that's why uh, this virus is considered uh, important and uh, as a potential emerging problem uh, in North America. So you can see that uh, these characteristic necrotic uh, lesions are developing uh, in the flesh of the tuber. So it's uh, necrotic uh, arches. Uh, and sometimes they may be visible on the surface of the tuber, but sometimes uh, there's nothing on the surface. You can 
see the symptoms only after uh, cutting the tuber. So you can see again that the disease may be cultivar uh, dependent <coughs> uh, and some cultivars develop these brown arcs. That's why, uh, that's why the name, the British name spraying. Uh, tuber necrosis may be visible on the surface but may not be visible. What is interesting that uh, when infected tubers are planted, the viruses uh, uh, can be passed to less than half of the progeny plant. So in theory, if you don't have a vector in the soil, uh, this disease would be self-eliminating. Uh, the second soil-borne uh, uh, potato virus that is considered emerging or uh, and quite significant is tobacco rattle virus uh, causing the disease that is called corky ring spot uh, in, in the US or uh, spraying uh, in Britain and in Europe. Uh, and uh, in foliage, uh, the symptoms may be very mild or lacking uh, completely. And if, if you see symptoms that may, they may include slight mottling, uh, but tuber symptoms uh, can be severe and well visible, and then they include mild or severe necrotic arching and spotting throughout the flesh. Uh, the appearance of this uh, tuber damage uh, may be similar to uh, potato mop top virus damage caused in potato tubers. Uh, this particular virus is uh, vectored uh, exclusively by uh, stubby root nematodes. Um, which uh, these nematodes favor sandy soils and can be spread by surface water or soil movement, uh, typically for any kind of uh, nematodes. Uh, if symptoms are visible in foliage, that's how they can look like. Uh, so this, this is uh, um, symptoms called stem mottle, confined to one of few shoots uh, and sometimes called figure of Cuba. Um, Similar to potato mop top virus, systemic infection of potato for TRV is rarely complete. So you may see uh, most of the shoots uh, uh, of the plant uh, lacking the systemic infection of the virus. Uh, and again, many uh, TRV infected tubers uh, when uh, give rise to virus free progeny plants and, and in the absence of the vector in the soil would have eliminated uh, this disease by itself. So this is uh, to, sh to illustrate why this uh, virus is important, especially for processing uh, potato uh, industry. So you can see very severe necrotic arching uh, in the flesh of the tuber and misshapen tubers. So in this case, you can see that the quality of uh, chips and french fries will be severely affected. Potato leaf roll virus is, uh, uh, is the virus that used to be a big problem in potato, but not uh, recently. Uh, one of the reasons for this is uh, the type of uh, vector transmission that it needs for propagation. So uh, the diseases this virus causes are uh, somewhat specific. They called leaf roll in foliage and tuber net necrosis uh, in tubers. Uh, so the uh, symptoms in foliage uh, gives the appearance of rolled leaves and uh, these leaves may be uh, colored red or purple. So sometimes plant may become clarotic and stunted uh, and in tubers, uh, you can see brown streaking in the vascular ring, condition known as uh, net necrosis, quite different from uh, type of symptoms induced by potato mop top virus or tobacco rattle virus. So the sources and spread of this virus uh, are seed tubers or volunteers that provide inoculum, and the transmission is exclusively by uh, colonizing aphids like green peach aphid. <clears throat> so the reason why this virus uh, doesn't seem to be a problem at the moment is that because of the good chemistry available 
to potato producers, colonizing uh, aphids can be easily controlled in the field at the moment. So uh, because of this uh, persistent transmission, you can easily control this virus by controlling uh, uh, its vector. So this is how the uh, foliar symptoms <coughs> of potato leaf roll virus look like. Uh, so in the foreground, you have uh, plants infected <coughs> with potato leaf roll virus showing yellowing, growth retardation, upright growth hab habit. So in, in very characteristic leaf rolling uh, in the foliage. <coughs> Uh, in tubers, uh, potato leaf roll virus induces internal uh, tuber symptoms uh, associated with uh, vascular tissue, uh, and maybe that's why it's called net necrosis disease. So uh, what about uh, control measures? As uh, with all uh, potato virus, it, it, <laughs> with all plant viruses, uh, there is no way you can get rid of the virus if it infected the plant. <clears throat> so you can uh, control viruses through prevention only. And, and this tactic of prevention may be different for different viruses, depending on the type of vectors that may be involved. Uh, but two approaches uh, are more or less universal for potato viruses. First of all, it's removal of inoculum because of the heavy reliance on seed potato uh, used for propagation. Uh, once the industry switched to virus-free uh, tissue culture, <clears throat> it became very uh, much easier to control potato viruses. So through uh, use of virus-free tissue culture for uh, potato cultivars grown in the field and also through the systematic use of seed potato certification, uh, almost all viruses uh, can be controlled, uh, possibly with the exception of uh, uh, the two soil transmissible viruses that I mentioned, uh, MOPTOP and tobacco rattle virus. Uh, and the second, uh, the second method for control that seems to be universal is uh, development of resistant potato cultivars. Uh, this strategy uh, uh, hypothetically can solve all the problems for viruses, but it's not an easy process. Sometimes it takes a long time uh, to create the resistant cultivar because of the complexity of uh, potato genome. So it was successful for some <coughs> viruses and for some virus strains, uh, especially, uh, uh, especially notable success was for control of potato virus X and also some strains of potato virus Y. Uh, but this is a long-term uh, solution. Uh, in, in certain specific cases, like potato leaf roll virus, uh, control uh, is possible through control of the vector. But this is uh, a situation of more of an exception that, that the rule. And uh, uh, I would like to acknowledge involvement of my lab on the left. Uh, and also my collaborators from, uh, from other uh, universities, uh, states, states and laboratories on the right. Uh, and also acknowledge funding that uh, supported research in my lab through uh, USDA NIFA, USDA ARS, Idaho Potato Commission, Northwest Potato Research Consortium and the Idaho Agricultural Experiment Station. And I also would like to acknowledge uh, supporters of the World Potato Congress here. And I think I'm ready for questions now.
Yeah, so this, uh, uh, okay. I have a question. Can you discuss C-tuber testing for the major viruses? Do they need to be sprouting? Will the virus be consistently found in all areas of the tuber? So this is a great question. And uh, 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 C-tuber testing is done uh, in different way, in different places. So the uh, most common type of seed uh, certification involves uh, winter grow out or post harvest te uh, test. Uh, in addition to the summer inspections that are routinely done uh, through the season. And in this case, it means that uh, a sample of tubers from a seed lot is, uh, is grown out uh, either in the greenhouse or sometimes in the warm place uh, during winter time uh, and plants emerging from these tubers can be either visually scored for symptoms of diseases or uh, foliage may be collected for testing. So this is a typical way um, of testing. But as you remember, I mentioned that two of these viruses, potato mop top and tobacco rattle virus, uh, rarely uh, go systemic in the plant, even in seed borne infections. So uh, you may not be able to uh, reliably detect these viruses in tubers if you use just traditional winter grow out tests. So in this case, uh, uh, a recommended way for testing would be direct tuber testing. Uh, and uh, that's the area of much of research at the moment. Certain programs, especially in Europe, converted to this uh, direct tuber testing. And there is a debate what is better to use, the, uh, give them uh, uh, opportunity to sprout first and test sprouts uh, or detect directly in tubers. So in some cases, uh, uh, sprouts perform uh, much better. But in some cases, if you use uh, uh, correct technique, uh, even direct tuber testing gives uh, uh, quite a reliable uh, result. Okay. Okay. So I have a question from uh, Isabel Vales. Could you expand on host plant resistance and uh, what recent cultivars are you excited about? Uh, Yes, there, there are recent examples of uh, good resistance, for instance, to potato virus Y. Uh, there, there is this cultivar called Payatracet that uh, was released uh, just a few years ago. Uh, it seems to be resistant to uh, all strains of PVY that were tested on this particular cultivar. Uh, the problem, al although, is that uh, it's not just the resistance that industry needs. So the cultivar needs also to have uh, all other traits or characteristics that makes it attractive for, uh, for the industry. Uh, and uh, uh, even if you have good resistance for a particular cultivar, it doesn't mean that it will be accepted by the industry. So it may take uh, it may it may take some time before uh, good resistance to viruses may be uh, integrated into commercially attractive uh, cultivars. Okay. Okay, let me, uh, uh, there is a question, if white flies uh, may vector any of the described viruses? Uh, no, the viruses that I mentioned uh, are not transmitted by white flies, although there are certain viruses, um, uh, Bigoma viruses, uh, and uh, uh, there is also a Crini virus uh, known in South America that are transmitted by white flies. 
So they may have uh, a role uh, in transmitting these diseases, although we tend to consider them uh, exotic uh, in North America and also for Europe. Um, okay. now, let, me, let me roll down. Uh, there is a question about pyrethroid resistance in non-colonizing aphids, such as serial aphids that can transmit potiviruses, probably including PVY. Um, uh, and uh, uh, so you mentioned serial virus, uh, serial uh, aphids, probably in relations to viruses like um, uh, PVY. Uh, because this is the one that uh, is transmitted non-persistently. And that's where if, in this case, because it's a non-persistent transmission, non-colonizing aphids have the primary role. So if, in particular, aphids from crops that are typically grown in rotations around potato fields like cereal uh, and cereal aphids, uh, unfortunately, uh, because of the non-persistent uh, non transmission, uh, the uh, PVY uh, spread cannot be controlled through controlling vectors. So uh, I'm not sure about specifics of the question, but uh, in general, just because the inoculation and acquisition time for the virus is uh, so short, we are not talking about uh, seconds and minutes, uh, the chemical just uh, cannot kill uh, the, the effort fast enough to block the transmission. Okay, so let me... Okay, so there is a question about have PY and other potato viruses ever been found to be transmitted through, through seed? So I believe you are talking about uh, situation in potato uh, because we uh, we are entertaining uh, a possible uh, use of true potato seed uh, uh, for potato production uh, i don't think anybody did any research on uh, transmission of potato viruses through true potato seed but transmission of PVY uh, through seed in other salinaceous crop uh, uh, is known. So uh, it's known in uh, pepper uh, and uh, possibly in tomato. So it's quite possible that uh, some viruses may be transmitted through, through seed. It just needs to be tested. Well, so there is a, there is a question uh, about uh, that sometimes plants in the, in the fields showing symptoms uh, may be tested uh, negative. <clears throat> and uh, sometimes plants that seem healthy uh, can be tested uh, uh, positive for a particular virus. Uh, yes, so the first situation when you see symptoms, but you don't see, uh, you, but you don't see a virus, may mean that you just need, you, you just have a new virus, something that you don't have tools to detect. Uh, so it's it's one of these situations. So the second situation when infection is asymptomatic is quite common. So uh, uh, we can say that. Uh, many strains of potato virus Y, for instance, may be asymptomatic in certain cultivars. Uh, and and the, these particular cultivars then become uh, so-called uh, typhoid marys to uh, able to um, spread the virus around through, say, especially through uh, seed potato. Uh, so it's, uh, these situations are quite common. Okay, so this is a very good question. Why is potato mop top virus not among the viruses that are included in seed certification tests in North America? 
So uh, part of the reason is that what I mentioned, that uh, this virus rarely establishes systemic infection uh, in potato plants, even when you have uh, seed-borne infection. Uh, what it means, it means that if you, if you test uh, leaf samples for this virus, uh, during a normal winter grow-out, uh, so what is typically done in the United States, you will see a negative result. But because of the uh, peculiar way this uh, virus accumulates in the plant, it doesn't mean that we don't have this virus. So in this case, there is a debate to uh, include potato mop top and also maybe tobacco rattle virus uh, into the certification uh, testing, but it has to be done differently. So probably through the direct tuber testing. So it's a uh, it's the issue that is being discussed at the moment. Well, the, there is a good question. Is mature plant resistance for PBY helpful in seed potato production? Uh, uh, it's... Uh, we think that it may be uh, important and it may be useful. Um, we, we think that uh, it may be one of the reasons that uh, uh, mineral oil sprays are effective to control PVY, especially if used early in the season. So it may be related to expression of this mature potato resistance. Um, so, uh, but uh, whether it, it is universal for all cultivars, uh, we are not sure at the moment. So it's a matter of research. Okay, so there is uh, there's somebody from Colombia asking, is there enough variability in potato I presume genetic variability in the world to fight these uh, viruses. Uh, so I would say that I think, I think so. So there is uh, the, I think potato uh, as a species um, uh, evolved in South America or in the Andes, um, just along all these different viruses that tried to attack it. And because it lasted for so long, the species itself probably accumulated enough genetic diversity to fight and uh, uh, survive effects of all these viruses. So uh, geneticists have a, a good field uh, to work with. So the uh, goal would be just to find this diversity and select the right one uh, to fight against all these viruses. <clears throat> okay, so let me see. Uh, there are some specific questions about certain particular cultivars like uh, Spunta behaving asymptomatically for certain strains of PVY, like say PVY and TN. Uh, I, I think I tried to cover these asymptomatic uh, reactions earlier. Okay, let me let me see if I. Uh, uh, the, uh, there is a question about uh, possible uh, beneficial eats, insects to control aphids in the field. Uh, but, but again, uh, like I said, it depends on what kind of virus you want to control. If, if this is a, a potato leaf roll virus transmitted persistently, uh, persistently means that acquisition time is very long, so you need at least 24 hours, better 48 hours to acquire the virus. 
and you need just as long to transmit the virus. So in this case, if you try to control efforts, you will control the virus. But if the transmission is non-persistent, like for uh, PVY or PVA or PVM or PVS, it won't help. So chemicals will not help and beneficial insects also uh, will not help just because there isn't enough uh, time to kill the vector before it infects the plant. Uh, so there is a question about uh, new biotechnological methods to develop uh, resistance to uh, PVY. Uh, I, I think uh, that the tools to control PVY are available. So uh, there were transgenic plants created maybe 20 something years ago that were quite efficient in uh, controlling PVY, but this is uh, uh, more of a uh, political issue at the moment because industry is not receptive to uh, transgenic tools. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a moving target. So if the public uh, changes it kind of uh, stance on acceptance of transgenic plant, maybe the whole problem will disappear. And I think uh, that, may be, uh, that may be the end of it. So I'm thankful to everybody who was uh, listening to this presentation and very grateful for all these uh, great and nice questions. Uh, and thank you, Nora, again for inviting me. Thank you very much. <laughs>